good evening everyone so i am a little little de-energized because our audience has halved since the morning <laughs> and uh, yeah so this title is fake we are not going to talk about it we are instead going to talk about how we have built a llm on top of async api that will simply <laughs> if you give it text it will create your eda but that is again fake we are going to talk about this itself so let's start uh, so tonight <coughs> i'm pooja and this is abhishek that she uh, tuli already introduced thank you tuli for that uh, we are going to tell you a tale about the journey of asynchronous communication at postman so uh, and how async api did the heavy lifting of catering for our developer experience need experience needs while doing this so let's start uh, we'll be starting with the problem that we had before we begin anything on this initiative where does this point to yeah but where do i point it anyway okay this way so we had uh, the need for demand uh, need of notification pan out so let's say service a had some change and service a want to notify service b c d and so on about that change but it doesn't care about the response received from those services we had many such use cases for example user leaving a team where uh, the synchronous apis would fall short and uh, asynchronous communication needs to be inter introduced another need was maintaining events through its life cycle so after introduction asynchronous communication needs to be nurtured through the proper tooling for the every phase of life cycle starting from discovery design till deployment and reiterating the versions of the apis published the third point was we needed a source of, source of truth regarding the state of asynchronous communication like the events flowing in production what do they carry and uh, what is the current production version of events for any service so now that we have figured out the engineering need how do we go about enabling our developers to adopt asynchronous communication at postman so thinking about what does our teams need they would need uh, event discovery event design and guidelines and templates they would need or tooling around authoring and collaborating while authoring the events they would once done with this they would need ci validations and uh, automated infrastructure provisioning and monitoring setup if this is done they would need debugging assistance once the events are in production and there are bugs so once we have figured this much out you would wonder where does async api fit in all this but you might not wonder this because this is the async api conference and it must have to do something with this so we share the goal with async api project of developing mature asynchronous apis just like rest apis we want to provide the source of truth for the state of asynchronous flows at postman we want to leverage the mat uh, mature and rich tooling that the community has around asynchronous apis at postman we want we like the extensibility of the async api spec that allows us to configure the event driven infrastructure as code regardless of the stack infrastructure stack used so because of these it becomes a natural choice for us so now is about the time that i mentioned synapse the medium that bridges the gap between asynchronously communicating services just like the neurological medium between two neurons that passes the electrical impulse let's di dive deep inside synapse with abhishek
This is the Synapse system in uh, context of other services involved in asynchronous communication. We have an example service called Soil, which produces low humidity event. And there is a consuming service called Water, which is a subscriber of low humidity event. So the low humidity event gets sent from Soil service to Synapse provision infrastructure that ultimately reaches the destination via HTTPS or SQS, which are the subscription types we support as part of Haskell. If we zoom inside, we see many components involved in sending the event from publisher to all the subscribers. Uh, so we want teams to have separate infrastructure so that it is isolated and can be changed according to their needs. So the gray components are the components of Synapse system. Uh, so we have Synapse SDK, which uses async API parser for understanding the schema and uh, pro provides APIs for sending and receiving events. Uh, so each service code deployed contains async API schema along with it. So we haven't experimented much with code generation tools yet, but we'll do so in the next iteration. So Soil Service uses Synapse SDK to send low humidity event to Soil Services API gateway, which serves as a gateway for all our events and authenticates the incoming requests. So the API gateway exposes APIs to publish events, subscribe to channels, and also to get the information of all the channels you can subscribe to. So the API gateway sends the event to the Soil Services Broker Lambda. Uh, so the API gateway exposes APIs and it is powered by the Broker Lambda, basically. So the API gateway sends the event to the Soil Services Broker Lambda, and Broker Lambda sends the event to the low humidity topic on SNS. And basically, SNS is responsible for the fan out of all the messages to the subscriber's proxy Lambda. And proxy lambda is responsible for sending the event to the right destination, which can be an HTTP or an SQS, uh, as defined in the async API schema. So as SNS does not support private HTTP endpoints and uh, multiple authentication mechanisms needed by our backend services, there is a need of a proxy lambda. So each service code, along with async API, is checked into GitHub, where we have Synapse CLI for validating the schema and also sends the schema to the deployer for uh, creating the infrastructure that we see here, uh, along with the help of async API parser. Yeah, let's look at the developer lifecycle with async APIs. Uh, for design, we have standard guidelines for event design and writing async APIs. Our teams create async API uh, drafts on Postman's private API network uh, for collaboration and review by other members of the team and uh, uh, publish APIs for it. Uh, so for subscribers, they can also use the Postman's private API network, uh, basically for discovery and choosing events to subscribe to. Uh, uh, for the develop phase, uh, we have Synapse SDK, which understands the schema, async API schema, and pro provides APIs for sending and receiving events. Uh, for testing the setup, we have Synapse CLI, which also helps deploy the infrastructure. Uh, for deployment, the code is pushed to the appropriate branch that uses Synapse CLI for uh, basically creating all the infrastructure with the help of the Synapse deployer. Uh, for monitoring, we have Synapse dashboards on Neuralink and AWS. Uh, uh, that tells us information about event drops, latencies, and uh, error rates. So this is an example of how the authoring UI looks like on Postman. Uh, useful for collaboration and review by other members. So we maintain separate schemas for publisher and subscriber schemas for, main, uh, for ease of maintenance. So this is how the publisher schema looks like. We mentioned the async API version, info block, title, version, description, along with custom extensions like X service name and X domain, uh, which are mainly used for infrastructure creation. So the X service name is the machine readable name of the service, and the X domain is the boundary the service belongs to, which is uh, which is mostly the team name. So both the su publisher and subscriber schema mention the server's object, uh, which describes any container capable of sending or receiving information. 
So in the case of publisher schema, we mentioned the API gateway information. Uh, for subscriber schema, it is basically the information of uh, SQS or the HTTPS webhook information. So the rest of them are standard async API stuff without any deviation. Yeah, this is how the subscriber schema looks like. Uh, we mentioned X service name, X domain similar to the publisher schema. Uh, the HTTP or webhook information or the SQS information is mentioned under the service block. Uh, we mentioned the event details under the channels block. And uh, uh, we have a custom extension here, X consumer info, which maps a con uh, channel to a specific server object uh, so that Synapse understands where to send the event. So we also have X publisher info which uh, contains the X service name of the publisher and also the major version used by the service, uh, typically for subscription purpose. So we have linked a useful reference here, uh, which helped us in understanding how to structure the following information uh, and served as uh, base for all our async APIs. So this is how the example, uh, this is an example output uh, for Synapse CLI usage on local, it defines what uh, what went wrong with the schema. For example, in this case, X service name and X domain were not uh, were not created, so those are mentioned here. Yeah, this is the. This is how the server's object looks like for the consumer schema. We mentioned the queue information or the webhook information. Uh, so that is all. I'll hand over to Pooja. Yeah, so our tale doesn't end here. Uh, we look forward to building further iterations of Synapse with the help of knowledge that we gain from the community. And today we are grateful for the community for the tooling and to organizers for the opportunity. Uh, look forward to seeing this more and also contribute to the ACT API project. Thank you. And that also ends the speaker lineup of the day along with my presentation.